everyone. It's great to see you at Park Valley Kids. My name is Pastor Paul. We've had fun this month talking about responsibility. Remember, responsibility is showing that you could be trusted with what is expected of you. If you wanted to play any of these kind of games, first you need to know the rules to follow. That's how you make sure that you play fairly and responsibly. The same thing is true about the way we choose to live every day. Well, we've discovered some great rules for life all through the Bible, which will help us to play well and finish strong. We can put our trust in Jesus no matter what's going on in our lives. We can trust him when everything's going great and also in the times when we're afraid or confused. I love the words of our worship song. Let's sing. You never turn away, you never leave my side And every time I call your name out just to find That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start No matter what I'm facing I will trust you with my heart Trust you with my heart There are days when I feel I need a friend And then I hear your voice reminding me again That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start Trust you with my heart You are more than able To lead me through the dark Your love is never failing I will trust you with my heart Whoa, whoa I will trust you with my heart No matter what may come No matter what I go through God, you are Never gonna fail me I will trust you with my heart no matter what may come, no matter what I go through, God, you are Never gonna fail me, I will trust you with my heart You are always faithful, you love me from the start No matter what I'm facing, I will trust you with my heart All right, thank you for praising God with me. We finish this month with something Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. This is what he said. He said, don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Our words have power to help or hurt others. When it comes to our rules for life, what we say and how we speak matters. Watch this. Did you understand that? I said, hi. I'm Erica. How nice of you to join me today. This is such a fun game to play, and it's really funny. <laughs> Here's the rules. You put this thing in your mouth, and then you say, hey, and he are trying to guess what you say. People have to guess what you say. You try it. Today, you're talking about responsibility. Show you can trust it if that is expected of you. Did you get that? Well, just in case, today we're talking about responsibility. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. I think you think 
anything I was saying? I never realized how important my words were until I had them taken away from me. Today's Bible story is all about how important words are and how we should use them. I think this will be a very important lesson for all of us to listen to. So, see you soon! Did you get it? Huh? Are you still going? Huh? The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, Chapter 4, verse 29. There's an old saying you might have heard before. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah, on the surface, that makes sense. I mean, you drop a heavy rock on my leg, I might end up with a big cast. But you yell at me, and I don't even get a scratch, right? Well, it's a little more complicated than that, as we're about to discover in a letter from the Apostle Paul to the church in Ephesus. Uh, let's see. What are the most important things they need to know? Paul had spent years teaching the church in Ephesus, but now he was in prison. So he wanted to remind the Ephesians what God had done for them and how it should change the way they treated each other, especially when it came to their words. Hmm. Don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. Your words are strong and powerful. They can make an incredible impact on the people around you, whether that's for good or not. Let's imagine what it might look like if we could actually see our words. You totally rocked it on the field today. Oh, now those words were like a nice pat on the back. Words can be incredibly encouraging. Hey, I know you've been feeling kind of sad. I'm always here if you need someone to listen. Mmm, that was comforting. Just like a cozy blanket and warm cocoa. But we don't always use our wordy superpowers for good. Wow, did you even look in the mirror this morning? Ouch! Oh, that burned. Things are getting messy here. <laughs> and if you get really angry, well, that's when your words can be real zingers. You are so mean. I wish you weren't my brother. Ooh. Thoughtless words can shatter someone, break apart relationships. We all make mistakes with our words sometimes. We all end up hurting others with the things we say. But when that happens, sometimes we get a second chance to use our words wisely. I'm really, really sorry. That was an awful thing to say. Can you forgive me? Just like your words can hurt people and break relationships, words can also be uh, the glue that puts them back together. Your words can actually bring healing. Think about it. Every single one of us has the power to make or break somebody else's day with just a few words. Whether you write it, speak it, type it, or shape it, your words are an incredible tool. You may not have the money to buy somebody an expensive gift, but the note you write or the encouraging thing you say in the hall may mean even more to them. So think about your words, each one. Weigh them carefully. Picture actually what they might look like when they come out of your mouth, a knife that cuts deep or an encouraging pat on the back. Remember, Paul believed our words are so important to God that he wrote about it from prison. Don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those 
who listen. Sticks and stones and wood are wood are canola pie. Have you heard that phrase before? Oh, <laughs> I said, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Do you think that's true? I mean, I guess a word is never going to actually like break an arm or a leg, but can someone's words hurt you? I think so. How about this? Have you ever hurt somebody else with your words? I have. Why do we do that? If we follow Jesus, it's our responsibility to use our words wisely. The Apostle Paul wrote, don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. Our words should be helpful. We should use them to encourage people. You're doing such a great job. I'm so proud of you. We should use words to comfort. It's going to be okay. When life gives you lemons, like lemonade. And you should definitely use your words without this thing. It's not always easy to control what you say, but a good place to start is to try and think before you speak. Think. Are these words helpful or hurtful? Do they build up or tear down? Take a few seconds, especially if you're mad or upset, to think before you say words that hurt. Here's the rule for life to remember today. Use your words wisely. Simple to say, not so simple to do. You're going to need God's help for sure. So, to sum up, sticks and stones and like lions, but words may also hurt. Here you go. Are you gonna? Huh? 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 With God's help, you can use words of kindness, hope, and love. You just have to follow this important rule for life. Use your words wisely. Say that with me. Use your words wisely. It's such an important message. Let's pray and talk to God right now about this. God, your words are trustworthy and true. We want to follow your example and use words that will build up and encourage the people around us. Help us to have self-control and wisdom and as we choose what words to say each and every day. When we mess up, help us to use our words to repair what we did wrong. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll, I hope you've had a chance to memorize the first part of Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Let's say it all together. Suppose you can be trusted with something very little, then you can also be trusted with something very large. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Great job. Remember, a new devotional page is available each week at the Park Valley Church website. Check it out. We're going to close out our time today with one more video. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Adventures of Ram Reynolds. Ram, Tad, and their constant companion Arrow fly towards a secret rocket base hidden far out in the forbidden desert. Wowie zow! I can't believe I get to fly in a real rocket! Hold your horses there, Tad. Flying a rocket is a lot of responsibility. We can't take it lightly. I won't let you down, Ram! Arrow and I are up for the challenge! Isn't that right, boy? That's good to hear because the professor is really trusting us to get that rocket into space. You can count on us, Ram. Isn't that right, Arrow? Ruff, ruff. Meanwhile, at the secret rocket base, 
The Professor and Dr. Wolf talk over their plan. Ram and Tad should be arriving any moment. And if they can't get that rocket into space, our goose is cooked. Are you sure we should be relying on Ram and Tad for something so important? He'll do fine. I hope so. We should be approaching the base. I'm going to go ahead and start our descent. Look, Ram, there's a jet headed straight for us. And he's not moving. Oh! No! We almost ended our rocket mission before it even started. Talk about a close call. I wonder what that jet was doing, Ram. Beats me, Tad. But I'm going to get this plane on the ground before anything else happens. We made it. There he goes again. Wowie zow. Talk about not being responsible. <sighs> what a show off. Look, there's the professor and Dr. Wolf. We are so glad you made it. We almost did it. That jet could have taken us out. Who was flying that jet, Professor? Werner von Braun. He's the one trying to beat us into space. Beat us? I didn't know we were in a space race. Ah, there she is. The winged vulture. Uh, the, the winged vulture. The winged... Never mind, you get it. We're all set, Professor. Wowie zow we are. Just be careful, please. Okay, Professor. We're finished with the all-system checks. I think we're ready to go. And Tad... You're sure you can handle the separations? You can count on me, Dr. Wolf! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one! We have a liftoff! Wowie zow! Please, Tad, don't hit the moon. Good job, everyone. You've cleared the tower. All right, Tad. It's now your turn to separate the ship. I... I just got nervous. You can do it. Just remember your training. Like, really nervous. I know we can count on you. Oh. Separation in three, two, one. Separation? I did it! Good job, Tad. I knew you could do it. You ready to do it one more time? Oh, I forgot about that one. Thanks, Arrow. Don't worry. I know you've got this. You're one of the most responsible 10-year-olds I've ever met. Really? Really. Separation in three, two, one. Separation! You did it, Tad! You've made it into space! We've won the space race! 